Howdy, folks. My name is Blake, and we're going to talk about some eBay sales today. For those of you who don't know, I am a full-time, not having a job kind of guy, where uh, the way I make my money is by YouTube stuff, Amazon, eBay. I do some consulting. I do some consignment. It really all does kind of swirl around. Uh, and actually, I kind of have a big announcement. This is the first week that I've ever made more than $1,000 profit on eBay, or at least not including like weeks where I auction off a bunch of stuff that's just like liquidation that I have from a big buyout. So that's good. Uh, most of my income comes from Amazon. For those of you who have watched the series, you know I sell a lot of used stuff, DVDs, video games, books, um, electronics on Amazon, toys as well. And I'm slowly building up my eBay store, and we had a pretty big week, so I want to share some of the sales with you so you can know what to look out for when you're out sourcing at garage sales or thrift stores or wherever you are buying someone else's stuff to resell on eBay. That's my store right there, Making Deals 99. We're going to go over what I bought, and I'll just do a quick explanation of why I bought it, uh, some things you might want to know about it, and then at the end of the video, we're going to see what is definitely my biggest sale on eBay ever. So the first thing is Wildwood Wisdom, Ellsworth Jaeger hardcover with dust jacket, the 14th printing. Right there is the book. You can see a little damage to it. Anytime, I always say this, if it has any kind of like a hobby application or a vocational application and it's old and it looks cool, it's probably worth it buying this one i had listed at 35 bucks plus shipping and i ran a 25 percent off discount on all of my books to try and get some more sales going and it definitely did work i'm only paying about 50 cents for all of the books so i can be very generous with my discounts the next thing is a sterling silver gucci bead right there it weighs just under an ounce, 26 grams. I bought this in an estate sale buyout a long time ago. Had it listed at 130, uh, went a 30% off deal on all my jewelry. Uh, that was over $20, I think. A lot of that more expensive jewelry, there's a lot of margin in there. And it finally did sell. It's been listed for a year, basically. April 6th, 2021. But I bought it long before that. I had it listed on Mercari for a while. I had it listed everywhere and it just wasn't selling. Finally, it did. Sold for $90.97 plus $4.95 shipping. And that's going to a buyer in Kentucky. Uh, I was kind of a bit worried it might be a scam. They had low feedback. Uh, I, I shipped it with insurance. If they say it's not as, um, not as described, I could be screwed over. Uh, when jewelry gets over like 40 or 50 bucks, I worry about fraud. I have not had an instance of fraud yet on jewelry, but uh, it is the kind of thing that I worry about. If you worry about it, probably just know your fears are a bit over exaggerated. There is fraud. That is a big problem on eBay. Uh, but in this case, I'm not really that worried. Band of Brothers Steel Case Blu-ray 6 Disc Set UK. So a buyer with one feedback bought this. Whoops, I didn't take away their name. Well, uh, it's it's okay. Uh, new, but someone spilled coke on it, so it has residue on the packaging. I really worry that this is going to be returned for two reasons. One, it's dirty. Two, it's the UK version. Right there you can see. Uh, sometimes you're, that could be Canadian, but I'm pretty sure that's UK because it looks like that's Celtic on the bottom of it. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, and the person who bought this does not live in the UK. They live in Maryland. So, I, uh, them being a new account, uh, probably I should have messaged them and been like, hey, you know what you're buying, right? Here is a brand to look out for. Vintage Big Mac JC Penny flannel button up, large tall. Really cool 70s colors and design. Kind of a big collar. Whenever I sell an old shirt, what I'm doing is always putting the measurements in the listing. You can't really tell with these pictures, but I do have photos of where the tape measure ends just for my own listing ability. Uh, and this sold, I took a best offer on this for 60 bucks. So it sold for 60 bucks plus 995 shipping, went to an international buyer in France. Another international buy, so to a buyer in England, zero feedback, 0% kind of worried me, uh, but it went eBay 
international shipping, so all I had to do was send it to Erlang or Kentucky. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, it's a University of Michigan jersey. Sold for full asking price, ninety four twenty three. I don't know how I hit up with that number. It's been listed since May 24th, 2021, so about a year. Uh, old school, that was Chris Weber's number, number four. Fab 5 jersey. I'm in Ann Arbor, so I get a lot of old Michigan stuff. And this one did not disappoint. And as you can see right there, I have the measurements. Uh, 21 by 30, so 21 across, 30 down. Kind of a weird, narrow thing. And, uh, yeah, I have it right there as well. I'm always going to price super high on this stuff. I was the only person who had one of these for sale. And whenever you control the market like that and you have an in-demand product like a basketball jersey of a really popular program, price high. I just sold this on a best offer. Um, I don't know why this is best offer accepted here and not on this because I definitely, maybe it's because I sent out an offer on that one. I'm not, not sure. Uh, this was a best offer. Apartments and dormitories, an architectural record book by the F.W. Dodge Corporation. Uh, as it's just like images of old apartments and dormitories from the 50s and 60s. 1958, the keywords I used were architectural record book and then mid-century or MCM. Went to a buyer in Pennsylvania. Uh, I originally had it listed at 60 bucks. I paid 50 cents for it. And so I'm definitely happy with that three or with that thirty dollar uh, sale. This is kind of a big book. It's like eighteen inches by probably ten inches. Uh, weighed over three pounds, and it only cost five bucks to ship. I love, 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 love picking up this brand, Duluth Trading Co. Men's Firehose Canvas Presentation. That's how it looks. Anything Duluth Trading Co. I, uh, like a jacket or pants for that matter. I can always sell. I paid five bucks for it. Sold for about sixty bucks. When you take into account the uh, shipping charge and it sold and let's see, I listed it on March 18th and it sold, I think a week later on like March 25th. A lot of six Orson Scott card books, sci-fi, Ender's Game, Shadow, Xenocide, Tor is the publisher on most of these. I paid 50 cents per book, one, two, three, four, five, six, so three dollars total. I uh, had listed originally at 30 bucks, but I lowered the price in all these. Uh, and it's only going to cost about four bucks a ship. Some more awesome sterling silver jewelry. Taxco, that's a brand to look out for. It's like a, a region in Mexico. It's also, maybe brand isn't the right word, but it's a style. It's a keyword to use if it is Taxco. Two inch sterling silver, 24 gram wing statement MCM chunky angel wings and A111. The way I store my jewelry is in like a tackle box kind of, and I have each of the individual cells numbered. And this was in cell A111. That's how I do my inventory for jewelry. I paid about 15 bucks for this, sold for $58.80. They paid for shipping, an easy sale, but it did take, uh, I guess actually it only took, so this is not correct. I, I, I ended the listing and did a sell similar on February 21st, but I've had this listed for like two years before that. Uh, I went back a lot of my old listings and I ended them and I changed the keywords and I updated them. I think the keywords I changed here, I put in angel wings. It was just wings before and I changed to angel wings. I don't know if that's a better keyword to use. In this case, it did work out, but it's kind of, you're always guessing. I've learned that like angel's a good keyword, owl's a good keyword, cats are a good keyword, dolphins are a good keyword, mushrooms are a good keyword, gnome is a good keyword, and then I'm still learning more. Here's a brand kind of like Duluth Trading Co, like outdoorsy gear. Cool men's 40 by 30 black nylon pants with many zipper pockets. There are a lot of zipper pockets here. I know some guys just love zipper pockets. You can put things in there. You can run around in the woods. They're not going to come out. Who wouldn't want that? This, the buyer asked to cancel after they bought it because they had the address wrong. And like eight out of 10 times, that means that they're not going to buy it again. They just want to cancel. But in this case, they actually did buy it again. Uh, they paid full asking price. 50 bucks plus shipping shipped first class mail actually um for pants i just always do 9.95 shipping because they're going to fit into a, a padded flat rate mailer and that's going to cost like 820 so i'm always i'm always safe on that uh so this one i paid five bucks for these pants i made like 45 dollars after fees and everything so that, that's that's pretty pretty good less than that but i mean a very profitable flip next up another book lutheran worship hardcover book missouri synod 1982 concordia white gold so this book in blue or gray even though it's personalized didn't matter this book in blue and black and gray sells for about 15 bucks 
I did not see any other white versions. It actually went to a student or a teacher maybe who teaches at a Concordia College. Um, there's a bunch of Concordia universities or colleges. I don't remember which it is. They're in, there's one in Ann Arbor. There's also a few in Wisconsin. This guy was in Wisconsin, I think, uh, who bought it. Uh, personalized and gold on front cover. X Libris stamp on the inside. Always make sure you say that. I would guess that they're just going to use this as a display book on their shelf. It looks very nice. The white is a good touch. Uh, it's not real leather. It's like not even bonded leather. I don't know what it is. Fake leather, I guess you're going to call this. Uh, I paid 50 cents. And they paid full asking price after the discount, which is about $28, and it cost $3.19 to ship. More JD Rob books. I sold that lot of like 18 JD Rob audiobooks, used audiobooks, I might add, for like $185 on auction a few weeks ago. I bought these at the same time. Two, now the, the audiobook lot I sold, those were MP3 audios. These are just like audio CDs. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, the difference is, is that these will work in a CD player and those have to be like unpackaged on your computer. I don't know what the difference in like encoding is, you know, from a, a technical standpoint, uh, I paid three, you know, I paid actually only a dollar for both of these total. They were only just a piece brand new. I had listed at 50 bucks and then 25% off down to 37 46 plus shipping. I paid a dollar. Went to a buyer in, uh, can't remember, somewhere close. This is a really cool one. WWF Ultimate Warriors Workout Comic Action Book 91 Rare Variant Illustrated. It's a variant because there were two covers, and this was the uh, far less common cover. Someone bought this for a dollar back in the, I don't know, mid-90s probably. Uh, it took me a long time to sell. I had it listed on here since September 22, 2021. But I had it on Mercari for like a year and a half before that. Uh, I did not did not take that price. I took sent out offers and it sold for thirty bucks plus shipping, and it went to an international buyer in France via eBay Global Shipping. Down to our final two. This was an awesome sale. Buyer paid full price, uh, and it was uh, actually I think it was calculated shipping. So they ended up paying about fifteen bucks. It sold for just under a hundred dollars. It's a David's cookie jar from the Disney Alice in Wonderland series they did. Uh, it's not actually a teapot. It looks like a teapot, it's not a teapot. Really pretty. These sell for between 50 and 80 bucks. I went high end because I did not see any other for sale. A buyer in Texas bought this. Uh, it took a little bit longer to sell than I would like. I bought it on February 4th. It sold in the end of March, like March 20th. No, March 15th, actually. So a little over a month to sell. I paid four or five dollars for it into 80 bucks. That's the kind of flip I love. Uh, they received it already, no issue. I've not gotten positive feedback yet, but when something breaks in transit, they usually tell you like right away. So I think this is gonna be a good sale. And just as like a little tip, uh, whenever I do anything over 50 bucks, that's like gonna break. I mean, for coffee mugs, Really, I'm utilizing priority mail shipping. I would never ever ship a coffee mug or any of these things USPS select. I'm always doing UPS ground or priority mail because those are gonna have insurance up to 100 bucks built in. And even if you take the utmost care, sometimes these things do still break. Like I had a coffee mug that I packaged pristinely, go to a guy in Brooklyn, and it was just, it just arrived totally smashed. Like someone dropped, uh, 25 pound weight on the box and just just flattened it so those things do happen um, just make sure that you're shipping things that have insurance built in speaking of insurance this next sale was so expensive that I actually had to buy supplemental insurance because the insurance that I could buy on eBay did not cover it when I maxed it out you can get up to five thousand uh, dollars in liability insurance which it's, it's like 60 or 40 bucks for that I actually had to buy additional insurance through a service called UPIC because this sale was so high. And boom, there it is, a Rolex watch. Rolex Men's Date Just 16013 Black Dial 18 karat yellow gold and stainless steel watch for $6,799.95 and <laughs> $4.95 shipping. 
Uh, that was a mistake to put the shipping on there. I just updated all of my listings to have a minimum of four to five shipping if they were in jewelry. Uh, and this got lumped in because jewelry and watches are the same like parent category. This just shows you, you don't always have to have free shipping. I know it's kind of funny, ha ha ha, who, you know, who cares about five bucks? That isn't the point here, this is a mistake. The point is, the buyer still bought it, paid full asking price. Now let's talk about this Rolex authenticity guarantee because a lot of people, when I posted about this on TikTok and I made a shorter video for YouTube Reels or YouTube Shorts, whatever, there's so many of those. Um, they said, they're gonna return it, it's fake. No, they're not gonna return it. I do not accept returns. Uh, and because it has the eBay authenticity guarantee, they can't return this. Once it goes through the authentication process, they're stuck with it. Uh, now they could potentially file a chargeback. This did not go through escrow, it went through eBay payments. I don't know how that's gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna be a chargeback. Um, the person who bought it, he's got a lot of feedback. I looked him up. It's a guy in his 70s. He just turned 70. I think he might have bought it for his 70th birthday. Uh, now, how did I get this watch? I didn't just find it at a thrift store. This was actually a consignment sale. And I gotta say, um, not the best pictures. Really not the best pictures, not a super high quality. I took a lot of pictures. Uh, I made sure that I showed everything that it came with, and that was the box, the papers, everything. Um, this was the most expensive watch of this number and this style and this color that sold on the past 12 months. And I used Terapeak to find that out. Usually without the paperwork, without all this good stuff, this watch will go for about $5,000 to $5,500 with the paperwork. Um, with incomplete paperwork in the box, you see about 62. I could not find an exact same listing. Now in the back of my head, I'm wondering, could I have gotten seven grand for this? Yeah, probably I could have. But it sold, it was listed on March 3rd, and it sold March 20th. Uh, you know, I think that means I priced it right because I'm not waiting months and months and months to have a sale. Uh, and it's also not selling overnight. And when a, an item this valuable and high price sells overnight, that means you're probably priced it too low and someone's just gonna flip it. Not there's anything wrong with it, I'm just saying from my, what I was doing in this sale, and I'll tell you a little bit of a story about it. So this is a consignment sale for a family member. They took it to a jeweler, the jeweler offered them 3,800 bucks. And I said, no, 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 no. We can get a lot more than that. And when I say that, for some reason, people go, well, what do you think? It's a jeweler, they gotta make money too. Yeah, I know. If you're thinking that, you are missing the point of the video. The point that I'm trying to make here is that by just taking a few simple pictures, this this is not master level photography here. This is a iPhone XR is the phone I used. And like even looking at it, it's kind of grainy. That still worked because you have this authenticity guarantee that really calms buyers and um, puts confidence in them to make a sale. So what is the eBay authenticity guarantee? Well, basically, I ship it to an authenticator. It was a watch store in Dayton, Ohio, because the buyer who bought it lives around Dayton, Ohio. They check it out. Uh, within two days, they'll say, yes, it's real or no, it's fake and then they deliver it to the buyer using, I don't know if it's a courier service or if it's UPS with signature, whatever it is, um, you have to, they have to sign for it. So you're not gonna have any wasn't delivered claims. Uh, you're not gonna have any not as described claims. I didn't see any specific language about protection against chargebacks, but I have to assume if you go through all this stuff, there's no way that eBay is gonna allow a chargeback or I mean not eBay whoever well yeah e because eBay is doing the the processing potentially if it's like with a credit card maybe like American Express would allow a chargeback but I really 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 doubt it um I think this is about as safe as you can get selling a you know almost seven thousand dollar watch online another thing people wonder about with this a sale this big is the fees so eBay has generally about 15% fees, and so you're thinking, oh my God, you paid $1,000 in fees. No, I did not. That 15% is up to the first $1,000. After that, it's like 2%, really, really low. Uh, so I only paid about 
$350 in fees. I think it was like $354 out of this uh, six, seven, nine, nine, ninety-five number. In terms of uh, shipping, I used UPS ground with adult signature and I insured it through uh, ship insurance for $5,000 and you pick for the additional $1,800. Because it was a consignment sale, I wanted to make sure that every single dollar was accounted for. I didn't want some crazy freak accident to happen and for it to be lost. Um, and so it was like 60 bucks. A little, I think it was a little more than that because I had to buy, I, I did, I accidentally did adult signature as opposed to only a signature. And adult signature means they're over 21, so the person has to check for ID, and that costs like two bucks more. But all said and done, about $410 in shipping in fees. That's a lot less than most people would have guessed. Uh, and that's why you watch this show, to learn things like that. Thanks for watching. If you're new, please subscribe. If you're not new, give the video a big thumbs up and comment below with what your favorite sale was or anything you learned in the video for that matter. And I'll see you guys later.